public relations, marketing, and social media and healthcare requires making the right moves at the right time. Welcome to the Overrated and Underused Show. Here's your hosts, experienced marketers Jen Jennings and Tom Testa, with special guest Adrian Stoner. Overrated and underused, the Overrated and Underused Show. Welcome to Overrated and Underused. We are Jen and Tom, as we are every month. Uh, <laughs> joining you on the Health Now Radio. We Radio. have not changed. Uh, but anyway, well, uh, Jen, I know we had a great conversation last month. We talked about the Vive Hymns experience, and we're going to have a little of that rolling over today as we have a, a great guest in Erica Grau joining us today. I'm so excited to talk to Erica. We have worked with Erica for several years with her past companies, and really, you know, she's Super smart in marketing. So very excited to hear her take on what is overrated and underused. Exactly. Yeah, Erica brings a, a great energy and I think a, a great passion to to marketing and communication. So yeah, excited to, to dive into it. Outside Insights. All right. Well, it's time to bring on our guest for the, our Outside Insights segment. We are excited. Jennifer, I are very excited to welcome Erica Grau, the Director of Marketing for Proficient Health. Welcome, Erica. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to connect again, Erica. Lovely to talk with you. Very excited for this. Yes, you guys can't get rid of me. (laughs) Still here on air. We would never want to. Never, ever. (laughs) Yeah, no, actually, for those of you who may remember, Erica was part of the Talking Telehealth show that aired on Healthcare Now Radio about a year or two ago. So Erica is no uh, stranger to the Healthcare Now Radio airwaves, right, Erica? Yeah, that was a great time. It was such um, just an interesting time in healthcare to be reporting live on so many changing topics in healthcare, in telehealth. You know, every month I felt like during COVID things were changing. And so to be kind of one of the few telehealth podcasts or, you know, radio shows that were out there, it it was a great time. Very true. You know, from a from a marketing standpoint, our show, Jennifer and I, right, Jen, we, we went through some stuff too, talking about a lot of the impacts of COVID on marketing and events and things like that too. So probably talked about events more than we wanted to, but it was just, I mean, it was it was such a, you know, it was what was happening, it was what was of concern. It was the questions we're getting is, you know, the value of different things or what do we do in the absence of in-person conferences. And so yeah. that's yeah. kind of yeah. just where things led us. I listened to your episode about like overrated, under underused on virtual events and totally agree. <laughs> you know, I think <laughs> by the end of 2021, I think we were all kind of like, please don't send me another invite for a virtual event. Like, right, right. We're tapped out. Definitely. Or the, say the, the word, fatigue was there. It yeah. was. Or say the word pivot. I think if we used pivot yeah. one more time in any of our, so we will be pivot free on today's show, I think. So uh, we're already in the new normal. So like, what are we doing in the new normal? guys? <laughs> very exactly. True. Very true. Well, uh, Erica, so tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do at Proficient Health as well as Proficient Health themselves. Let's introduce our, our audience to your, your company. Yeah, thank you. So I've worked with several healthcare IT startups, really focusing, you know, specifically on patient engagement. Today, I am working as the director of marketing for Proficient Health. So Proficient Health connects complex provider networks through referrals management and provider solutions. Not to talk more about events, but Eric, I know you were at Vive. So Tom and I are in our last month's episode really kind of gave our recap on Vive and hymns and, you know, and the shows and the return to in-person conferences as we know it. So interested to hear another perspective on, on how the show was for you as an exhibitor. Yeah. So um, really exciting to be somewhere in person. That was my first time attending a trade show since fall of 2019. So to be there in a big event center with thousands of people just felt great. Um, So Vive is kind of produced by Health, which I think they do a really great job for sponsors. I think, you know, in a lot of years, I felt like a lot of the trade shows and events that we went to, you know, were kind of produced by the vendors, but then there wasn't really any kind of return. So I do feel like, you know, all of the health production, they do a really great job of 
making sure there's good opportunities for their their vendors. Crazy to talk about it, but I think on the the COVID front, I think they did a great job with the testing and making people feel safe. They had the wristbands, so you knew, you know, someone walking by was willing to shake your hand, or you know, maybe they don't want to shake your hand. So it was it was nice to have those kind of green, yellow, red symbols right. there for you. Right. Yeah. Um, overall, you know, I think it was their first show. So I think there's things to learn. I think the traffic was good. I think you guys were there too. So I think for us, and you know, we had a booth um, and it was just at the end of the day, the traffic just wasn't there. So I think mm. when you're in a city like Miami and it's one of the first times people are back, it's, it's hard to keep these healthcare executives probably in this kind of like ballroom setting at 6 30 p.m when you have like the world's best restaurants and just probably a ton of meetings that they're already committed to so i think some of the the timing of the event i think to keep it from that last i think it was that the, the happy hour from 5 30 to 6 30 it's just late and it, it's hard so as an exhibitor you know the traffic just died down there and, and it was a challenge this year, right? Because Jennifer and I discussed too, Erica, how, you know, this is, th- these are back to back. This was Vive and then you yes. had hymns the next week and uh, folks are still kind of reemerging post-pandemic or maybe not, we're not in a post-pandemic yet, but as the pandemic kind of lessens its grip on things, um, but budget still took a huge hit, right? Exactly. So it, it, so now you've got to determine, am I going to be at Vive? Am I going to be at hymns? You know, Vive also has had that uh, that chime connection too. They partnered mm-hmm. with health. And so they've got the CIOs, a lot of that audience there too, for certain members. And maybe that helps sway people. But, you know, did you, did you feel like, did, did it come down to you uh, and looking at your budget as well as your objectives to, well, maybe Vibes the show for us versus hymns? Yeah, so we 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 knew that we wanted to exhibit at Vive earlier this year. We kind of made that decision to attend. We did have, you know, some of our team um, attend hymns we didn't exhibit, but we, they, you know, they went for meetings and I think it was really successful in that aspect. But yeah, I think it's, it's definitely challenging, you know, if you're an ethic or a big, you know, yeah. company where you probably have multiple booths, it's easy to go to back-to-back shows because ship it out or you send, you know, option one somewhere and option two somewhere else. But if you're an early stage company, you, you probably have one booth. And so you have to kind of make those decisions of where am I going to go, especially when it's back-to-back. Yeah, a lot of a lot of logistics that yeah. hopefully, and it looks like, you know, with the schedule next year won't be as big of a concern, you know, since there's a few weeks in between them, at least this time. But yeah, no, I think overall, I think, you know, our perspective was that, you know, for a first time show, it was it was great. I think just overall, you know, across both conferences, there was a lot of excitement and energy in being back in person. So so yeah, no, that's great. Love hearing other people's thoughts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tom and I can give ours all day long, but we love to hear from other people. Definitely, and and, and Erica, you know, you've been to both, even though the, this year you physically weren't at both, but you've been to hymns in the past, so it is great to hear from you. Um, where people are saying, well, where's where's Vibe going to fit into everything here in terms of the hymns competitor or not? So, like Jennifer said, it is good to hear from from others who who we respect your opinion as someone being at both. Yeah, I think we had a lot of really great conversations, but it's just, it it wasn't on that kind of hymns level where you come yeah. home with 150 leads because you, you know, 150 out of 40,000 people. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. The number, it's a numbers game. It is. It Always is. a numbers game. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, in, in keeping with our show's theme, we are definitely interested in hearing a little bit more about your take on what is overrated in healthcare PR and marketing. Overrated. Talked about the events and maybe that's something that you feel is a little overrated or underused, but let's let's go overrated first, right? Jennifer okay. and I want to hear what should everyone maybe stop doing this year or they found that it isn't really valuable to focus on anymore. And this can span recent or you know throughout your career. What have you found to be overrated? It's interesting. I would have said two years ago that trade shows were overrated. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting. I would say that trade shows are underrated now. Underused. Oh, okay. Which is a hot take for me because, you know, I think it was interesting with, with COVID and, and I was fortunate to be working with, you know, a telehealth organization. So at that time, so during COVID that's, you know, our business 
blossoming, if you will, because we had a, a product that everyone was looking for and needed. And the easiest way to go about that in a COVID world was through our website. And so, you know, that's kind of where those inbound marketing strategies are really strong. So providing easy way for people to be routed to the right person that they need to talk to based on what they're looking for. And so, you know, I think right now we're in a really competitive marketplace, really competitive out there, I think in healthcare IT. And so I think trade shows are a great way to be in front of prospects again. And so hot take, but I just didn't think that after COVID, I would think that everything would be focused on digital marketing. And I still think that that's probably where people should spend a lot of their time focusing, but It's interesting that I do think that there is a big play for events, in-person events. You know, we talked about Vive and Hims, which are the the big giants in the group, but do you feel there's an underrated potentially use of the more specific niche trade shows and local Hims chapters and things like that? Underused. I definitely do. I think like the overrated is, is those virtual events. I think a lot of the regional shows have kind of, shifted a ton of their efforts into that virtual event. And so I'm sure you guys see it too, but I feel like every week I get an email for some kind of three-part webinar that's happening. And so I think webinars are a great tool, but you know, that can be overrated if you're really spending all of your efforts there. I think webinar fatigue is a big thing with, you know, kind of tied with that virtual event. Yeah, I I definitely agree. I think webinars are great, but I think it's got to be in moderation. You've got to have like really compelling topics or speakers and there's just got to be a balance to it. And just knowing that if we were talking four or five years ago, you know, webinars are fewer and far in between. Like, but now it's just, there's, like you said, there's, I've got seven invites, you know, in my inbox today for different events coming up and I think everybody, yeah, there's just that fatigue that's kind of setting in for the virtual events. And so, I mean, I I think there's, there's education out there to be had and people will look into a topic or look up, you know, resources on that. So, I mean, maybe, maybe more educational pieces are, you know, that are more like available on demand, you know, for the people that are looking for that specific content versus having to register for this webinar that may or may not, you know, kind of fit into my schedule. Totally agree. I think it's all about relevant content and then leveraging that content. I think as, as marketers, I think back in the, you know, early COVID days, as we would say it, you know, we would see webinars with like 300, 400 registrants, and we're just not seeing those kind of numbers anymore. And of course we do sponsored webinars with all types of organizations. And it's interesting, you know, looking at these media kits where they used to offer two or three webinars to a vendor every single month. And now, you know, they're like, we're offering six per year because our members are, I've had enough. And, you know, I think we take our content very, we want to make sure that we're providing good content and it's educational and, and, and all of that. And so I think that that's an improvement. So having those kind of, those sponsors kind of tailor back because I think it was in a more is more kind of place for a long time for a couple of years. And, and so now I think, I think scaling it back will be really beneficial like content wise. It's almost like the bandwagon effect, you know, it, it happens. We see it so much in marketing, like where people see, you know, some companies see start seeing success through a different tactic. Like when people started creating blogs for like company blogs and then everybody started creating blogs and then there's this saturation of everybody's doing it and nobody's really paying attention to what's happening and kind of like the same thing with social media like social media's gone through a lot of evolution but it's essentially through like you know there's so much noise out there and there's so many people doing it how do you actually cut through and do it effectively yeah. Soon, yeah. soon all these marketers are going to be doing podcasts and radio shows too. I know. I mean, what, what's happening? next? I mean, I, I do feel like that's happening. I feel like podcasts are, are, are the new bandwagon. <laughs> they it's really true. are. 
It's we true. started it. We Erica was one of the first. She was. Oh my gosh, the three of she us was. pioneers. <laughs> so, so you talked a little bit about you kind of snuck in there how you think that the in-person event is now underrated potentially again, right? It changed, you know, your stance on things. The pandemic had. What else? What else do you feel is an underrated tactic that you may turn to daily, weekly, and you say, you know, not enough people are doing this. This is what marketers should be doing. Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about it a little bit too, but I think underrated is repurposing content. Like we said, LinkedIn, email, everything is just so crowded. And so I think it's easy for us to develop a piece of content and build a campaign around it and just be like, all right, we're done. Um, but if you have a really great piece of content, you really do have the opportunity to chop it up. You know, webinar is a great example. Um, so, you know, we do a lot of sponsored webinars. And that's a great opportunity to create, you know, a campaign for social and just divvy it up, create some really cool sound bites or quote graphics, things like that. So I think really making repurposing one piece of content for 50 different things, instead of looking at it as just a single, like I have one piece of content, I'm going to blast it out three times. So there's so many different things that you can do. And I, I think that's kind of underrated because I do think we get to a point where we develop one really nice piece and then move on to the next thing. I think it's really easy to do that, especially if you're in like a high moving, fast pace. Yeah. Conversation you, like most of us are. You know, too, and you use the word campaign, which is interesting because I feel like that, I don't know what you, what you both think, and Erica, what you're thinking about this, but I think that's an underrated term, I think, because like you just said, people tend to do something and say, oh, I, I made this piece of content, box checked, move on to the next. You know, I almost feel like the, the campaign aspect of it is, is a pretty underrated. What are your thoughts on that? I definitely do. So I think making sure that your messaging is resonating and like really diving into like the data of that campaign, um, I think is really strong. You know, I'm a huge HubSpot advocate, Hub, HubSpot nerd, if you will. And so, you know, we build out like some of these really nice complex workflows in HubSpot with our campaigns. And it's really nice to have these touch points and our, our sales teams love it too, because it's a great opportunity for them to kind of see what's working and kind of engage early on. And so I think just making sure that you're, you're staying in the know, in the data, in the the metrics, if you will, of your campaign is, is really important. And one other thing too is, and I think that all is absolutely true. And I think you, again, you touched on some great points, Erica, how PR and marketing is a good complement to, to fuel the sales side of things. And, and, you know, it's like, it all goes hand in hand. That's why the term campaign, it just becomes, it's much more than just the launch of a product. And here's what we do, a press release and, a, you know, maybe a white paper and throw it on social media, right? Some, the campaign doesn't end there. So, um, and with just the marketing team. One other, I guess one other thing, and again, I'm, I feel like I'm turning this into a rapid fire, like over it or under use, over it or under use. <laughs> but something else I'm, I'm curious to get your thought on too is, as you mentioned LinkedIn, and only because you had mentioned it too, and there's a, it's, it's loud, like you said, there's a lot going on, a lot of noise. Thoughts on LinkedIn as the platform has evolved since we all here on, the, on this um, stage and this uh, show have um, seen it evolve from being like a, a virtual Rolodex to what it is today. What are your thoughts on, on LinkedIn? My thoughts on LinkedIn, I think um, it's a really great tool. I love to connect with people on it. You know, I think as like um, a marketer, there's a lot of really great opportunities. We love to use our LinkedIn really to showcase, you know, what's going on in our company. So I think it's a great opportunity to show company growth and HR. And, you know, again, I think LinkedIn is easily the number one place to have a job. So if you're hiring, like this is a great time to, you know, have those, you know, kind of HR campaigns, you know, like we have some open positions and it's always great when we post that and then, you know, our team members share it with their networks. Cause again, that's how you get quality people in the door. So, you know, I think it's, it's a great thing for those type of things. I don't look at LinkedIn as like a demand gen opportunity per okay. se. I don't think that you're going to get necessary, necessarily leads, you know, coming in the door from the, that kind of engagement. I think it's really kind of more thought leadership play and, and more on the HR side, I would say. That's interesting. Yeah, no, I agree with that. 
the uh, totally too, especially on the thought leadership side. I'm glad that you kind of snuck that in there at the end because I think that's what it's turned into for some folks, you know, because you can publish on on there. Kind of, it's almost become a micro blog in some way for some people. Um, so, so yeah, uh, thank you. I was just interested in your take on that because this is some of the stuff that Jennifer and I have gone back and forth over. And what I'm what basically what I'm doing, Erica, is I'm settling some old arguments here on the show. <laughs> oh my gosh, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm taking. Are you rehashing well. old? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, Tom, we're coming back to this. <laughs> okay. So this is what I just want you to know that Erica, I'm just being very transparent. Well, Erica um, said, Jennifer, you know that's what's going to be on the next show. Okay. Um, no, I, I agree. I mean, I think right now, especially, you know, everybody's hiring, like every company has a yeah. position. So it is really important that, you know, they're kind of, you're representing like the, the information on your LinkedIn page and all of that is kind of a good reflection of the company, you know, the, the company culture, the company happenings. And, and like, that's definitely a great place where, you know, if there are your company has these more of just like the employee or like the internal, you know, what it's like to be a part of your company. In addition to, Hey, here's some of our awesome, you know, really big announcements. Here's what, you know, we're doing in this space. Like here's our executives commenting on this. Like here's some of the articles we were in, like just kind of sharing those type of things really gives a good perspective on the company. And yeah, it's more so important now because there are so many companies where they are hiring, they have open positions, and that's probably one of the, you know, that and your website, especially if your posting is, job posting is on LinkedIn, that's the first place they're going to look is for more information about the company. Well, now, Erica, I I know we've got to let you go because Proficient needs you. So we don't want to take up too much more of your time here. But before we let you go, Jen, I like to also ask just, is there any final hey, this is something that we didn't discuss, but marketers stop doing it or start doing it or any general observations you'd like to leave as kind of a final thought. Well, I don't know. This is might be controversial, but you know, we've we've seen it a lot recently within our campaign. So like I mentioned, we're using HubSpots to send our send out all, all of our emails. And um, I think what's interesting, and I think we'll see kind of how things shift this year is, you know, Apple has this new privacy law that's changed. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you guys are experiencing this, but, you know, it's drastically kind of, well, it's good for us as, you know, receivers of things because it's protecting, you know, our privacy, but open rates have kind of drastically dropped because right now you can't see if a sender has opened your email. So I think that will be interesting to see this year, how we change, how we report and how we kind of put emphasis on open and click rates. Cause you know, we, we look at those as part of our, our lead funnel. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes this year. And we had a call recently with HubSpot and they haven't necessarily changed anything yet. So I think that's going to be, it's going to be a hot topic this year for, for marketers. Something to watch. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a great perspective. Stay tuned for a follow-up episode yeah. <laughs> in a few months as we dive more into how this has impacted things. But yeah, I'm curious as well. I mean, there's always kind of something, but I, I think it just challenges us and maybe not rely so much on the numbers. And you know, it's really the you know the end results and all of that. But I know we're all in the business of wanting to prove the value prove the ROI, all the things. And so numbers definitely help with some of that, but you know, maybe it'll force us to not rely so much on the numbers. And Apple rules the world. So I guess we've got to do <laughs> yeah. whatever, whatever, what, right? what Apple says goes. <laughs> what Apple says goes, and now they're going to change this. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. And it'd be interesting uh, too, to see what, what, you know, those you report to how, how they, cause it's, it's now it's time for, this is always a challenge for, for us marketers and publicists is to, you know, how to manage that up and say, it's okay. All right. So this has changed. And, but this is what it means for us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and stuff you're still figuring out, like you said too, Erica. So, but that is, that's an interesting thing, which I was not aware of. Yeah. Was last, of- last September, they rolled that out as part of their iOS 15 update. And so, mm. That and then IP, IP addresses are hidden, so you can no longer see where where that email was opened. But so. yet they know which dress I was looking at on Lulu's, like I every know. day, and they <laughs> so it's fine. But it's fine. It's fine, but they can't they can't tell anybody that I opened the email that they sent to me. <laughs> exactly. 
Well, Erica, this has been an outstanding conversation. Thank you so much for taking the time to join Jen and I. Uh, we really did enjoy this conversation with you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's so great to talk to you guys. Thanks, Erica. All right. Well, thanks to our ONU groupies, if they still exist, <laughs> for, <laughs> for tuning into this special episode with our Outside Insights guest, Erica Grau, Proficient Health. We are sponsored by Anderson Interactive and can be heard weekdays at 10 a.m., 6 p.m., and 2 a.m. Eastern on Healthcare Now Radio. You can also email your inbox with Adrian questions to hello at Anderson I, that's the letter I, dot com, or tweet us at Jen underscore Jennings, Tom underscore Testa, or Adrian underscore Stoner. Use the hashtag over under radio. Thanks for listening to the Overrated and Underused Show with your hosts, experienced marketers Jen Jennings and Tom Tessa, and special guests Adrian Stoner. Over.